And so we already see in the market many CPOs combining their high power chargers with storage solutions in order that they maximize the utilization of the available grid um, connection. With the um, power swap station, we already have the storage integrated, but we don't need to buy an extra storage because the storage is actually consisting of the batteries we are, we are swapping. Mm -hmm. So the, the big advantage of the power swap station is that instead of being an extra burden to the distribution grid, the power swap station can be a relief for the distribution grid because we can use the available storage in the power swap stations in order to balance the um, frequency and to balance the, the grid at all and relieve the grid. Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in again. And this will be a very brief video because it's Sunday and I don't want to take too much of your time. It's basically two topics and then I'll leave it with a little bit of an outlook. So the first one, obviously today we got uh, monthly deliveries, again, more than 20K. And I just want to remind that in the beginning of this year, we had bank analysts downgrading NEO stock because the narrative was, well, NEO doesn't have any new models um, that they can throw onto the market. And so big concern around the deliveries and now the fourth consecutive months with more than 20,000 deliveries. I would say it's not perfect yet, um, but it's pretty damn impressive in my opinion. And uh, it's well aligned or even above my personal expectations. So uh, kudos to NEO and they proving the analysts wrong on this regard. And uh, I hope that we can see this type of consistency. But now we even got Onvo, the sub brand, the volume brand with a lower price uh, yeah, coming up. And so we could only imagine that possibly sales will increase the monthly sales now, com uh, consist um, now consisting of two brands going forward. Although still I have my, uh, you know, my reservations about uh, the impact in the short term by Onvo, but uh, you know, it's, it's looking quite compelling as an offering package. So we'll see, it could potentially be a big boost. Let's see if we can end the, uh, the year on the strong side. Uh, that would be great uh, in in case that they could even you know go towards something like a 50 percent year over year growth that would be fantastic but let's see now that's just a side remark my main topic actually for making this video was about um an interview that i've seen with a executive by neo that actually filmed in uh, the neo podcast room at the neo house in berlin uh, I've been there a couple of times. I made my own podcast there, but uh, this one is an official uh, NEO podcast. Um, as you know, I'm not affiliated with NEO. I'm, I also need to stress that here. I, other than investing in the stock, I'm not receiving any benefits from NEO. And well, in this pet podcast room, they had uh, a guy from NEO Energy uh, or NEO Power who's doing that, uh, I think, on a high level side in, in Germany, in Europe, and discussing with an external consultant. And so uh, I think it's worth watching the whole thing. If you haven't seen it yet, um, it's featuring two very thick German accents, even thicker than mine. So that's a, a, a nice little goodie you're getting there. But uh, no jokes aside, you're also getting quite a bit of information in there, much more than you would usually see in this type of corporate communication setting. So I think that's refreshing. It's good to see. They've been talking about a couple of reasons why they think battery swapping is a, a, a potential, an opportunity, um, and also how it's having advantages over supercharging or in addition to that, right? So it's uh, never either or, it's really both and um, the extended potential battery swapping is offering. And there was one thought-provoking um, idea towards the end of this podcast. Um, I think I might, um, you know, cut the original in here for a sec. And utilize uh, more and more the revenue streams from those services uh, in order to further decrease the electricity cost for our users because that's the actually the, the core of NEO is um, user satisfaction. And I'm deeply convinced if we use the power substations not just individually but as an entire network um, for electricity trading, for balancing power, then at some point I could imagine that we could reach the situation that users don't have to pay for electricity. But of course, this won't happen tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, but uh, it would definitely, according to NEO's strategy, 
um, to be user centric and to reduce the cost for mobility for users as much as possible. At the same time, increase the advantages of the power substation for the society to a maximum. And the idea here is to basically give uh, new users uh, energy for free because of the potential of grid balancing and how they can, you know, play around with the the consumption time and the demand side and so on for battery swap stations, something unique that superchargers cannot do, they might be able to turn that into another benefit for users. And I have to be honest, like the first time I heard it uh, was obviously, well, that doesn't sound great from an investor's perspective, right? I'd rather see the revenues from grid balancing going towards the NEO balance sheet. And uh, that's what I pointed out in some uh, napkin calculations in previous videos. But uh, that sounded like, oh, they're going to use those savings or those revenues and they forward it to the users uh, in order to make them more happy. But if you think about it, this could actually be another leverage on NEO sales. But, you know, the revenue streams from battery swapping, um, given you know, depending on the scale and whatnot, uh, it might be limited in how much that can actually take as a share of total NEO sales. You know, these other sales for NEO are quite low still in comparison to the outer sales. Uh, and yes, NEO does have this um, potential for battery swap stations. And uh, I said this could actually be hundreds of millions annually, or maybe at some point even billions a year. However, uh, you just make more money selling cars. And now, if NEO can leverage this as an ecosystem advantage uh, for users and therefore um, luring them into the system, basically offering free energy because they have this advantage that no other OEM has or only those who are uh, adopting ba battery swapping as well, then this could turn into more sales. And obviously you are making more money and more margin on that. And that's uh, kind of the uh, transition to my outlook here. Now NEO earnings coming up. What Neo now to do with those consistent um, yeah, uh, revenues growing over uh, year over year and uh, now monthly consecutively. Plus, uh, they're now talking more about the potential of battery swapping. And I'm hoping actually on the earnings call also more about the uh, profitability of battery swap stations and the revenue potentials and so on. And uh, the use of grid balancing and what this could bring in and revenues. That would be a second topic. And the third topic. Uh, that's what I'm referring to is that they're hopefully starting to show uh, decreasing net losses. And I think there's a potential for it because on the one hand side, they also uh, stopped a faster build out of the battery swap station um, yeah, infrastructure currently because they are transitioning also to a new battery swap station uh, version. And what I think will be the most important thing is that they can hopefully show vehicle margins growing because as I mentioned in my last video, this would be a unique situation, even in comparison to BYD, Li Auto, Xiaopong, and so on, uh, which are struggling in on this regard. And you know, once the vehicle margins are growing, this shows that they make more money on each of the car they're selling, and they're selling even more of them currently. And um, you know, with, that, with what I just said, if they're leveraging these um, savings in cost or bringing in revenues from battery swap stations, they can actually transition that to consumers and make even more money on the cars and stuff. So this is kind of the you know, the, the flywheel that NEO is trying to establish here. And I'm hoping they're talking about that more in the earnings call and it's demonstrating that also in the financials then that would be quite good. And as I said, different from what we see there out there with the competition. So that's a couple of Sunday thoughts, almost seven minutes. Thanks for watching. See you in my next one.